British Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson has become the latest world leader to congratulate President Uhuru Kenyatta on his re-election. The congratulatory messages by Johnson and other leaders, including former United Nations Secretary General Kofi Annan, appear to signify increasing global support for Kenyatta's second term in office. But just what changed in the global perception of the Kenyatta administration? Morimi Mwangi takes a closer look. Have consequences. We live in an interconnected world. The statement by former United States Secretary of State for African Affairs Johnny Carson in the run up to the 2013 general election, which would define the global displeasure in Anuhuru Kenyatta William Ruto presidency. Rift Valley Province. The two were at the time facing crimes against humanity charges at the International Criminal Court over the 2007 post poll chaos. <laughs> Fast forward to 2017 and President Kenyatta is suddenly receiving congratulatory messages from across the globe following his re-election for the final term. In an election that has evoked bitterness from the camp of his arch-rival, Raila Odinga, and put the National Super Alliance on a collision path with a global community, including international observer groups and former U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry. The observers have not helped Kenya to resolve this dispute. They have confounded it by giving, basically, uh, an approval to a fairly flawed process. And therefore, I'm very disappointed, Mr. John Kerry. I know what it's like to lose an election. I lost by one state, the presidency of the United States. And I had a lot of reasons to complain about what happened in Ohio or other states. But you, you got to get over it and move on. But the congratulatory messages for President Kenyatta's re-election continued streaming in on Sunday. The latest coming from British Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson, who termed the August 8th polls as a historic day for Kenya. This coming hot on the heels of similar messages by United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres and his predecessor Kofi Annan, who called on the Kenyan opposition to pursue legal redress through the courts. The people of Kenya have spoken, the international community has spoken, the observer missions have made their preliminary uh, assessment. I think what is remaining now is for both the legislature and the executive to, uh, to take the challenge, go to business. There were demonstrations in New York, in Washington, in Seattle, in Kenya. Every citizen has a right to demonstrate. But while the opposition has rejected the observer's declaration of the August 8th polls as free and fair, international relations expert Professor Masharia Munene cautioned that both Kenyatta and Odinga have to speedily resolve the prevailing standoff to safeguard the gains made so far by Kenya globally. We also need talking to by their friends, whoever they are, Although we understand they have refused to uh, listen to some of the people who thought they were their friends, they, that kind of thing. So there is more challenge on Railand Company than there is on Uhuru. I, I don't control um, uh, anybody. I mean, uh, w what is happening, people actually just want to see justice. We reach out to your supporters and say that in any competition there will always be Winners and losers. The standoff persists even as it emerged that the president's swearing-in committee is compiling a list of likely invited guests, among them former U.S. President Barack Obama, a host of African heads of state and such eminent European leaders as German Chancellor Angela Merkel and United Kingdom Prime Minister Theresa May.